Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. We are here three days after the 2024 AP Calculus AB exam. They released the free response questions. All right, let's go. We are going to start today with free response question number one. A graphing calculator is required, and uh, that's all you had to say. Let's do this. Tables and charts and graphs. Oh, my. I love I love when they give us this stuff. It makes for an easy question, especially part one, which reads, the temperature of coffee in a cup at time t minutes is modeled by a decreasing differentiable function c, where c of t is measured in degrees Celsius for time between 0 and 12 inclusive. Select the values of c of t are given in the table shown. Thank you very much. A says, approximate c prime of five using the average rate of change of c over the interval from three to seven inclusive for t show the work at least your answer and indicate units of measure my god how much easier could they have possibly made this first question all right we're going to approximate c prime of five this is c C prime is the derivative of C, which is also the slope of C. And since we cannot find the derivative of C, and they're telling us to approximate this, I am just going to pick the two closest values of where 5 would lay, which would be right here. I'm going to use 3 and 7 and just do a change in Y over change in X. Y2 y1 x2 x1 and we get a calculator my god 69 minus 85 all over 7 minus 3 that ends up being 4 is that negative 16 which will be negative 4 now just for poops and giggles okay just for poops and giggles, if you want to check that in the calculator, you can. But I know I got that right. Okay? Thanks for letting me use a calculator. Jeez. But we need to also include units of measure. This is a rate. This is my y, because we have change in y, over this is my x, change in x. My label also follows that pattern. It's degrees Celsius for my Y over my X, which is minute. And that right there is my label. Degrees Celsius per minute. There we go. 1A is done. And I couldn't have thought of an easier problem to start the 2024 free response questions. B says, use a left well, we're going to do this in green. Use a left Riemann sum, which we lovingly call RAM. With this, yeah, I'll be okay. With the three sub intervals indicated by the data in the table to approximate the value of the integral from 0 to 12 of C of T dt. All right, so that's the first thing we need to do is uh, we're going to use LRAM to figure this thing out. Okay, and we're going to use our table for it. Thank you. Next, okay, and this, I, this is weird. Next, they're saying just interpret the meaning of this, but then they have this 1 12th in front of it, which we'll identify in a second. In the context of the problem, they don't even tell me that they want me to evaluate what this actual number is. I mean, I don't see that anywhere. Use a left Riemann sum to indicate to approximate this, okay? This is different now that the 1 12th is in front of it, okay? But they're not asking us to approximate that. They're just saying interpret that meaning. Hmm. Okay, well, let's start. First off, let's do an LRAM. We have three sub-intervals above, and I like drawing these rectangles, different colors for visual. That's my first one. This has a width of three. Okay, my next one 
and goes from 3 to 7, that width is 4. And last but not least, we go from 7 to 12, and this width is 5. Okay, so let's do our LRAM. Uh, as I'm looking at the left rectangle in blue, and I got to do a LRAM, I want the left Y value. I got to multiply that times the width. So it is 3 times 100 plus, now I want to do the red rectangle. The left value is 85 times the width of 4. Next, I'm going to do the green rectangle. My left value is 69 times 5. Okay, and if you want, and I would suggest this, you are evaluating the integral from 0 to 12 of C of T dt. Okay, so now this we can put in our calculator. I mean, we really don't have to. It's, it's really nothing that's that difficult. View detached LCD. There we go. We'll lower this down so we can see everything. And we've got new. Up without going there. There we go. We've got to hit enter. We've got 3 times 100 plus 4 times 85 plus 5 times 69. That's 985. And that's exactly what that is. 985. They don't tell us to use a label, so we're not going to use a freaking label, damn it. But now we've got to do the second part. We've got to interpret what this is right here. They don't tell us to evaluate it. Um, if they did, Okay, we just figured out this part right here. That would be 985, and I would just have to multiply that times 112. So, I mean, if, if you're that type of person who's like, I just don't want to make a mistake, and so I can take this answer, 985, and multiply it times 112. And I would get 82.083. So, I mean, that's technically 82.083. If they had asked us to evaluate, that's what you would have done. But they just want us to interpret the meaning. So let's write something. C represents the temperature of coffee in T minutes, and that temperature is in degrees Celsius. So let's not forget, anytime I take the integration of something and I multiply it, times 1 over the difference in the bounds. 12 minus 0 is still 12. I'm really finding the average value. Okay, So it, that's my interpretation is going to mention that it's the average value of my C function. And C is in degrees Celsius. So this represents the average value of, or I should say, in degrees Celsius, because we want it in the context of the problem of the cup of coffee. From time equals zero minutes to a time which equals 12 minutes. And that's it. I mean, I, I wouldn't reinvent the wheel here, children. I would not reinvent the wheel here. 1A done, 1B done. 1C. There's a little curveball here, but it's just a, it's a very small curveball. Okay, very small. C reads, for time between 12 and 20 inclusive, the rate of change of the temperature of coffee is modeled by this function right here. Thank you so much for giving that to us. Notice that our table only goes to time 12. They're saying from 12 all the way to 20, okay, in this interval here, they don't give us values because we're going to use this equation. Okay, that solves for my rate of change for that time span.
okay? Where C of T is measured in degrees per Celsius, or excuse me, degrees Celsius per minute. Find the temperature of the coffee at time equals 20. All right, I know for a fact, and I said this in my review video, and I said this anytime I did a problem like this, that you will definitely see one of these on the final, and here we go. What do I mean? When I integrate the derivative of something, that brings me back to the original equation. Does it not? Yes, it does. Okay, but if I were to have bounds, let's call them 12 and 20, that means it goes to my original equation from the upper bound minus the lower bound. Okay, and this is exactly what we're going to do. All right, so instead of F prime of C, we're going to use C prime of T because that's given to us right here. Okay, let's make sure. What is that? Is that the no? No. 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 What? 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 Let's go. No. Okay, that's a negative 24.55e. I was just checking out that exponent. It's 0 0.01 to the t. All right. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to integrate this function right here from 12 to 20. All right. I need to find. my function at time equals 20. So this is going to be my unknown. So what I'm going to do, just to make things easier, is let's just add f of 12 to both sides, shall we? And by f of 12, I really mean c of 12. Because if we're doing c prime here, b should be c's. <whistles> Boom. So my C of 20, which is what they're asking us for, our coffee temp at time 20, find the temperature at time 20. This is what we're finding. That's going to equal C of 12. Where do I get C of 12? It's given to, whoop, it's uh, right there. It's given to us in the table. At time 12, my temperature is already 55. 55 plus whatever my integral here is in purple. And that's what we're going to put. Bring this back over here where I like it. Mm -hmm, mm, yeah, oh, yeah. It would be nice if that moved, kids. I think it's frozen. There we go. I'm going to put this integral. All right. And we're going to go math 9 from 12 to 20, and we're just putting in the, the function they give us. I'm going to create a fraction that was negative 24.55e raised to the 0 0.01, we are going to use x because we don't use the t in the calculator, over x dx. Now, don't forget, I've got to add that to 55. Okay, so my negative 14.671, we'll call that. Don't forget, we're adding that to 55. What did I say, 671? You really don't have to write that down. They see right here where you're getting your calculations from. So, plus 55, and we end up with 40.329. 40.329. Do they ask us for a label? They do not. There you go. So what was the one curveball? You can't forget that you needed to add this 55 to my integral. A lot of people see, oh, look, I have bounds. Okay? If I have the derivative and I want the original, I integrate. But don't forget, we didn't start at zero. We started with a temperature of 55 before it dropped another 14 degrees Celsius. One D. For the model defined in part C, it can be shown that C double prime of T 
is this function right here. 0.245e to the 0.01t times 100 minus t all over t squared for time t between 12 and 20. Determine whether the temperature of the coffee is changing at a decreasing rate or an increasing rate. Give your reason for your answer. So in part C, they told us that, oh, let me get a nice calligraphy pen here, let's go blue. They said that C prime of T was the temperature of the coffee. Okay, and that was when time was between and included from 12 to 20. All right, so this represents the temperature of the coffee. If I want to know if it's changing at a decreasing rate or an increasing rate, rate, okay, that's really just rate of change. So is my slope of C prime, because that represents the temperature of the coffee, decreasing and going down, or is it increasing going up? The slope of C prime is C double prime. So I just need to know, is C double prime negative? If so, it would be decreasing. Or is C double prime positive? Then it would be increasing, okay? And let me say this one more time. C double prime is the derivative or the slope or the rate of C prime. So if I want to know the rate of this is increasing or decreasing, I really just want to know if this is positive or negative. I'm going to graph this. I'm going to graph my function here that they gave us. I'm going to graph this, and on my x-axis, I'm just going to do it from 12 to 20. Okay, and I'm going to take a look at this. Yeah, that, boop, bit, there we go. Let's go down so we can see the equation. There it is. And I'm going to go to y equals. And we have a fraction here. It is 0. Point, yeah, I'll be okay. Yeah, it is 0. 0.2455 e raised to the 0.01x times 100 minus x. Thank God this is a calculator problem. All over x squared. And my window is between 12 and 20, okay? And if I graph that, I don't want, I'll go from negative 2. I just want to see if it's above or below the x-axis. Um, I'm going to go to positive 2 because I know this function doesn't really go that high above the x-axis. Now, if you graph this 10 you know, on the y-axis from positive 10 to negative 10, it looks like that blue line sits right on the x-axis. So if I really wanted to, I'm going to change my x-axis a little bit more. I think it's clear here. Well, let's do this. Let's go to the window. Let's go to, um, let's go to my y to negative 1 and positive 1. Let's graph that again. Okay. Now, it looks to me, if I'm graphing C double prime, okay, if my Y value is C double prime, I am always above the X axis. That means my Y value is always positive. It is never negative. It's never below the X axis, okay? That means my second derivative will always be positive from time 12 to time 20. Okay? So, let's go down here and answer this dang question. Now, I like to, I know you don't have to, I like to graph this. If y is c double prime of t, here's the number 1, here's 12, here's 20, and is that this it looks something like this. Okay. I'm going to say, since C double prime of T, comma, the rate of C prime of T is always positive. And I guess I could have written C 
double prime of t is greater than zero. I normally like to write that because I like to write less if I can. <laughs> it's always positive between 12 and 20. The rate of c prime of t is increasing. And I suppose if you're, you're anal, you can say increasing in that interval. And there you go. Uh, we are now done with problem one. That was really not a bad problem at all to start these free response questions. Uh, I hope you guys scored well on it. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.